Coming up next, I'm gonna reveal or tell you what my very favorite Chanel fragrance is. They have so many good ones. There are a lot in the running, but I have one that just always kind of takes my breath away. It's, it's just magical to me. Find out what it is coming up next. Welcome back everybody to Joel The Nose. And here in my freshly painted, and you can see behind me now, if you notice a little bit different, first video I've done since I kind of painted the room here, uh, nice crisp white because white does especially well for, uh, for, you know, for photography, hanging on the walls, and also of course art. That's why <laughs> galleries are white, it shows. And I rearranged my, a lot of the perfumes you can see behind me. I lowered the shelves so they're more accessible. And I put some of my artwork. Those three paintings, which you can see, I think pretty much um, are all uh, part of uh, the Bauhaus series from uh, the influential Bauhaus uh, kind of artistic center from you know the early 1900s in Germany. And uh, anyways, very influential in my painting. All right. Let's get right into this. Uh, enough of the introduction of my new space here. But uh, today I wanted to do a video I've never done before and discuss what my favorite fragrance is. And you know, there are so many good ones from Chanel. I mean, I, you know, you can go uh, on and on. Um, you know, one of the newer ones, Le Lion or Le Lion is one that I really like, a good ambery uh, fragrance. And uh, you know, I know there's Boy, a lot of people like that one. Um, they all have a cool, unique backstory. Um, there is, uh, you know, I guess, you know, when, when you read about it, I, I like what they've done uh, with Jacques Polge, who, who's been the in-house perfumer at Chanel for a while now, and he's created a lot of these exclusive, now I'm talking about the exclusive line from Chanel. I'm not talking about, um, you know, Blue de Chanel or the designer level. I'm talking about the exclusive line. You know, these are anywhere from, you can get, I think it's, uh, if you get the 100 milliliter bottle, it's $400. And I think the 50 milliliter bottle is about $200. Um, let me just double check that, yeah. So that is actually $250, depending on the fragrance. Uh, just double checking my information here. So anyways, what is my favorite one? Enough of the backstory. My favorite fragrance as I pull it out of my little Chanel bag here is bum, 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 Chanel 1957. I know, again, a lot of people, you know, there's a lot of different great fragrances here. Um, I, I, I like just kind of holding up so you guys can see it a little bit more, but um, you know, this is a fragrance that, again, uh, you know, there's so many great ones from Coromandel, which is, again, such a wonderful fragrance. One of my favorites, Coromandel. Uh, Sycamore, another really great fragrance. But this one, to me, is my favorite. If you like more ambery kind of uh, fragrances, those are great. The ones I mentioned, again, Le Leon, Sycamore, Coromandel. Um, but this one, to me, is probably... Not only my favorite Chanel, I would venture to say it's one of my top two or three favorite, what I would call, um, I would call almost like a, a skin smell fragrance. And I'm not saying skin scent because people when you hear skin scent think it's just something that you can barely smell and it doesn't project. Now this is an excellent performing fragrance. Again, it's an Eau de Parfum. Um, and this is the backstory on it as far as how they talk about it. Um, and let me kind of actually hold out so you can kind of see the bottle. That is, this is one of the many bottles that they have, but that is exactly how the regular bottles look also. Um, but basically when this was, uh, this was designed around when Gabriel Chanel uh, won a, an award in 1957 in the United States from Neiman Marcus as like one of the top designers in the world. And so she, 1957 was a year that was very, I guess, memorable to her as far as when she kind of became accepted in the U.S. 
and was traveling around from New York to Hollywood to California, and it just became very popular and accepted here in the US. So this is a fragrance that is an ode to that year, 1957, an important year in Chanel history. And this fragrance, if you just, I just put it on my skin, um, and just so you can see that I'm actually doing it, I will twist it. These little bottles are cool. If you go to the Chanel boutique, you cannot get this at say, you know, the department store. You have to go to an actual Chanel boutique, which I have one by me here. But um, I'm gonna put a little dab on my skin here. I love it. I, I, I just, ah, oh, boy, I really love this fragrance. To me, this is such a sexy fragrance. It smells so good. Like when I put this on my skin, I cannot stop smelling my skin. This is one of those ones where all day I'll be going like this. As long as it's on in the back of my hand or arm, wherever it is, I'm smelling this over and over again. And let me just kind of again, as you can see from the juice, it's extremely clear. It looks almost like water. So unlike again, Coromandel or Sycamore, which are more kind of the ambery color, this is a very clear fragrance. But what I like about this one, again, I'm just kind of hold it up there so you can see it. This has a beautiful white musk accord that it's, it anchors the whole fragrance. And that white musk to me is what that gives it that kind of beautiful, sexy smell of, of almost skin, of like that freshly showered skin. It's a little powdery, you know, Chanel is famous for the kind of aldehydes in their fragrances that gives it a little bit more of an effervescence or like a, almost a powdery uh, sensation. But again, take a look at that. Um, it's so it's got also at the top though, a really delicate bergamot and iris and neroli combo that gives it a little bit of a, a sweet citrus. So it's a little bit of a sweet citrus at the top that is just, I think, perfectly blended. Uh, and then you throw in uh, kind of as it goes into the base and the dry down, this very just sexy, cedary, uh, woody cedar note. Again, for those of you watching my channel, you know cedar is one of my absolute all-time favorite fragrance notes. Um, and they even throw in a touch of honey on this. Yeah, I mean, that's an interesting note. So it's not a crazy complicated fragrance. It's just a simple, perfectly constructed, well-blended, I think, masterpiece. And I don't think it's talked about enough in the Chanel world for people who talk about these fragrances. Um, again, it is, to me, timeless. It's classic. This could have been introduced in 1957 or 2027. This is a fragrance from the past or the future. It is perfectly unisex. I love the smell on me. I love the smell on women. So when I smell, uh, when a woman's wearing this, it just drives me crazy. Um, again, it's just, it's sexy. It's fresh. It smells like a, you're freshly showered and clean. Um, and those, again, just that touch of honey gives a little bit of a sweetness rounded with that neroli and the cedar and that white musk accord. It just, for me, it checks all the boxes of a timeless, elegant, perfect fragrance. Again, 1957, that's all I'll say about it. Uh, let me know, have you guys tried it? Do you like it? What are your favorite Chanel fragrances from the exclusive line? Again, not from the, um, you know, not from the, you know, the designer line, but from the exclusive line, let me know some of the ones you guys really like because I've really tried probably 10 to 12 of them and I can't think of one I didn't like. It's a really good uh, series from Jacques Poles. So there you have it. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Thank you for all your support. Um, I'll be back soon with another video. Peace, love, and perfumes.